in the last lecture we have studied higher frequency model of the mosfet right in that uh, we have seen what are the capacitance which will be mathematically represented when you go for the higher frequency concept like a cgs cgd cgsp cgdp that those capacitance are overlap capacitance the dominant capacitance here is cgs and cgd okay cgs cgs and cgd are the dominant capacitance that will be uh, uh, limit your gain in the higher frequency part okay so those capacitance are called as higher frequency transistor model capacitance okay here you can see the cgd is between the input port and the output port so this is a higher frequency uh, model for the mosfet right this is what we studied in the last lecture with we'll continue to that today we are going to see miller effect and the miller capacitance here like a rd i am taking as a rl okay i am rd i am taking as a rl and continuing my derivation part okay see now i am going to apply the kvl okay so you can see here i am going to apply the kvl in the input side i am going to apply in the kvl in the input side okay so when you apply the kvl in the input side so you can see this is the current which is coming towards this node and this is the current which is coming outside the node and this is the current which is coming outside the node so i a equal to i a equal to vgs so vgs divided by 1 divided by j omega cgs here it is between your input and the output it is in between the input and output so this is a vgs and this point is a vds so vgs minus vds because you are calculating with respect to the port 1 so that's why i'm taking vgs minus vds divided by 1 by j omega cgd okay 1 divided by j omega cgd so once you rearrange this equation once you uh, take the denominator j omega to the numerator you will be getting j omega cgs vgs plus cgd vgs minus cgd vds okay so this is a, a equation for the input part after applying the kcl okay now with respect to the cgd now we are going to see uh, like uh, with respect to the output okay okay when you apply the uh, when you apply the kcl in the output node with respect to the cgd i want to find what is the equation okay when you apply the kcl to this particular node what you will get so this this is a current uh, you can see here uh, this is going outside this is also going outside and this is also going outside okay so how you can write so you can write like a vds vds divided by rl you are writing kcl so that's why i am writing v by r then here the current term is gm vds here the current term is you have to calculate in the anti clockwise direction okay when you are con considering for the port one you have to calculate like clockwise direction that is vds minus vds here you have to move like a anti clockwise direction vds minus vds so vds minus vds divided by 1 by j omega cgd right so then the taken this j omega to the numerator and it was rewritten like vds by rl plus gm vds plus j omega cgd vds minus j omega cgd vds equal to 0 i hope uh, this is clear up to this now what i'm going to do is i'm taking this vds outside okay so this you can see here this everything have a uh, like a uh, like a of vds right so here you have a vds here you have a vds here you have a, a this is a vds right so this two you can keep in the left side and this vds term you can take to the right side so that this min plus gm vds will become minus so in that i am taking vds outside okay so if you take a vds outside what you will get 1 by rl plus j omega cgd similarly here i can take a vgs outside so you'll get j omega cgd minus gm vgs so i hope up to this you are clear now i'm going to apply multiply rl by both side when you multiply rl by both side it will be cancel you will be getting j omega cgd into rl similarly here you will be having j omega cgd rl minus gm rl into vgs okay so you know the uh, 
basic assumption which we made in the previous class that is omega CGD RL will be less less than 1 ok it will be less less than 1 ok so with that this is a best approximation you have to consider to proceed further simplification ok omega CGD RL is less less than 1 ok so what we derived uh, in the like in the input KCL in the input part is I A here this this is the equation you have derived on the input side right so I I equal to J omega C G S V G S plus C G D V G S minus C G D V D S so this equation I am going to take okay I am going to take here so I use this equation okay so I said clearly here uh, the KCL at the input of V CGD. See two equations so far we have derived. One is the KCL at the input of CGD and KCL at the output of CGD. Okay, so this I am taking a first uh, KCL equation that is IA equal to J omega CGS VGS plus CGD VGS minus CGD VDS. Okay, so here uh, previous what you uh, you take this continuation that is VDS 1 plus J omega CGD RL equal to J omega CGD RL minus GM RL VGS I am going to put approximation here so very important ok so with that approximation so very important with that approximation if you take this approximation what happened it will become 0 i this also will become 0 i ok so I can write this VDS this VDS will become minus GM RL VGS so VDS will become minus GM RL VGS so this is very important now I am going to substitute this VDS in this first KCL equation ok so when you substitute in the first KCL equation what you will get I A equal to J omega CGS VGS plus CGD VGS minus CGD minus GM RL VGS that is all so now see I A equal to J omega C G S plus C G D into 1 plus G M R L into V G S. So this is a Miller's capacitance. This is a Miller's capacitance. This is called Miller capacitance. Okay. So further I will explain you. So I can write this entire term as a C M. I can write this entire term as a C M. That is Miller's capacitance equal to C G D into 1 plus G M R L. So I can write after substituting this one it can be rewritten as I A equal to J omega C G S plus C M into V G S. Okay further further see uh, like a uh, up to this we have discussed right. So what is the equation actually saying is this capacitance C G D has a effect at input equal to the C M which is 1 plus G M or L times the C G D. So that is what this equation says right the capacitance this capacitance CGD the capacitance CGD at the input side at the input side equal to CM which is 1 plus GM RL times CGD that is what it is explained in this equation. So this is called Miller's capacitance this formula will be using in your problem to solve the problem ok so Miller's capacitance is CM equal to CGD into 1 plus GM RL. Okay, further uh, like uh, I am going to uh, like uh, in the previous year discussed the unity gain frequency right. So uh, I am going to use that uh, unity gain frequency and going to uh, like a uh, considering like a uh, 1 you know that unity gain frequency is 1 right that is a gain at unity gain frequency will be 1 that I am going to substitute and going to find what is your updated equation. Okay, so here uh, your uh, equation you know that this is your Miller's capacitance right. So with that you know that IA current IA is your input current ok so you consider this is short circuited ok you consider this short circuited right you consider this is the short circuited that is output is short circuited ok to find what is the maximum current gain ok we are going to find what is the maximum current gain at the unity gain frequency ok so the output uh, current uh, which shorted ID will be GM times of VGS right the ID will be GM times of VGS ok that is what is written the output current when shorted ID equal to ID equal to GM VGS ok. So here already you have calculated that is uh, IA see what we want to derive is that is a current gain. So current gain is nothing but the ID by IA. So ID already you determined that is GM times of VGS. So IA is nothing but a J omega CGS plus CGD into 1 plus GM RL into 
BGS. So this complete thing is your GM. So GM is nothing but a CGD into 1 plus GM RL. Okay, where CM equal to CGD into 1 plus GM RL. Right, so ID is nothing but a GM VGS. So with that your current gain will be calculated like a GM VGS divided by uh, omega CGS plus CM VGS. So I am taking only the model, I am taking modulus so that J will not come. So with that GM VGS divided by omega CGS plus CM into VGS. See you know that in the unity gain frequency, in the unity gain frequency I will put that graph. Okay. I will put the graph, see at the unity gain frequency, your gain will be 1, that is a 0 dB. Right, so I am going to substitute that gain is 1. Right, if you substitute what will happen, 1 equal to gm divided by omega, that is, this t is a transition frequency, right, that is a unity gain transition frequency, that is f of t. So f will be considered as f of t, so that's why it was written as, omega was written as omega t into cgs plus cm. Okay, so you know that omega is nothing but a 2 pi f of t. Okay, f of t I can take to the left side and omega uh, 2 pi will be in the right side. So, f of t equal to gm divided by 2 pi into cgs plus cm. So, here I can, you, you can, uh, you know that the cgs plus cm is nothing but a cg. Okay, so with that your gm divided by 2 pi cgs plus cm is written as 2 pi cg. So, equivalent input of gate capacitance is nothing but the CGS plus CM. Okay, so this is with respect to the input gate capacitance.